Welcome to the Simple Stitches podcast, episode number two. Uh, my name is Cindy, and you can find me on Ravelry as Cindy1717 and on Instagram as Cindy Teed. And I'll put all that information down here. So I'm just going to jump right into the knitting again. Uh, so, works in progress. I've got three works in progress, uh, one of which uh, was a carryover from last episode, two weeks ago, and the other two are new cast ons. So the first one is the uh, Petty Harbour Socks by Raina Curtis. Um, if you see me glancing down, it's, I've written a few quick show notes on a piece of paper here. So the Petty Harbour Socks by Raina Curtis. So for these ones, I'm using uh, Knit Picks Stroll Glimmer in the Peacock colorway. Um, it's a little bit dark again, but this one is a lovely uh, tealy blue color with a little bit of sparkle in it, so it's really nice. I just finished my first skein, uh, which is why I have this big long tail. I'm uh, using 2.25mm uh, uh, higher higher sharps for these ones. Um, I'm a magic looper, so I really like the 32 inch length of cable. And I cast on 64 stitches. So these will be for my mum. She's got quite a small foot, about a size 6 Australian. And um, so I've just done the heel, I've done the fish lips kiss heel here. I'm just coming down the foot. So I'm hoping I can finish these in the next few days. It's the uh, 28th here at the moment. And I think I mentioned last time that I like to do two pairs of socks per month. So this is my second pair and this is the second sock. And I've got a few days left of the month to uh, try and finish that off. So it's just a, it's a free pattern and it's just a simple I don't know if this is showing up very well. Maybe like that you can see. It's just a, a simple knit pearl texture, uh, but it's quite effective and it's a really lovely pattern. So hopefully those will be finished later this week. Uh, the next whip I've got is a new one from last time. So this one is called the Crenellated Hat by Jay Wilson. It's another free pattern on Ravelry. And for this one, I'm using uh, Mad Tosh DK in the colour Sequoia. So you can see there, gosh, this lighting's terrible, isn't it? You can see there, it's this really fun knit pearl texture again, but uh, almost in a very geometric kind of print. So I'm knitting this hat for my husband. I'm using 6mm needles, um, as I said before, the, uh, the Mad Tosh DK in Sequoia, which is this really lovely tonal, uh, like orangey red colour. Um, he likes quite a thick brim, so usually I would do uh, double the length for the brim and then he can fold it up. This time I also did that, but I actually attached it as a folded brim. So you can see here I, uh, I knit it and then almost did like a three needle bind off to graft the bottom of the hem um, to the top. So that way it's permanently folded over and it's really nice and thick. And yeah, it's very squishy down here. I had to start restart this project about three times and it was nothing to do with the pattern. It's just me, I, I didn't read ahead, um, which I really should have more than once. <laughs> so I had a lot of issues. It's nothing complicated. I was just casting on the wrong number of stitches and not realizing until I'd already done three inches that I um, should have been increasing. Uh, and I did modify the pattern a little because it actually has a, a garter stitch hem, I believe. Um, I just did the normal two by two rib. I prefer something a bit more stretchier. Uh, so yeah, it was my own fault. I didn't read ahead in the pattern and ended up having to rip it out three times and start again. But now I'm on track. The hat has you do two repeats of the chart. It is charted, it's not written. Um, and I just started my second repeat. So I'm hoping I can have that finished um, by the end of the week as well. Obviously I won't be able to give it to him until I get back home to Michigan, but um, it'll be good to have another project finished. And actually one of my... Um, Goals for myself this year is to reduce my stash um, by about 15%, which I worked out to be, I think it was about 28,000 metres. Um, so what I did was pick out 15 of my oldest skeins, or skeins that I really 
didn't like anymore or the, the colours weren't my choosing anymore. And this was one of them. I'm really not a red person. I did buy this skein for myself. But I, I just w wouldn't wear, wear it. I, I just don't like red and orange. Um, so I picked this one and I'm progressively working my way through that list of skeins to use up. So it's great to um, have a bit of a stash buster project. And my final whip is a sweater. It's in a bit of a disarray at the moment and I literally only just cast this on. This is how small it is. <laughs> So I really won't show it too much. It's got some eyelets in there and just stockinette. So I'm using six millimeters for this and the pattern is called uh, the Dill Sweater and it's by, which I'm not sure who it's by, it was a, uh, a hard copy pattern that I bought at the local yarn shop on sale. I think it was put out by Manus del Uruguay. Um, so I'm using the Shibui Staccato yarn in the graphite color which is a lovely grey, so it's nice and silky. I had actually used this yarn for another project, which I pretty much knit about 95% of it. So here's one piece that I just haven't pulled out yet. Um, so what I had knit with this yarn was the Chevy Cardigan by Anne Hansen. And I had some issues with the pattern itself. It uh, didn't read very well in one certain area, and once I got past that, it was fine. I knit the whole cardigan and then I started having sizing issues for, for the back section. Um, I was trying to work out the maths for the gauge and just it wasn't coming up nicely. And the more I thought of, about it, because this yarn has quite a high silk content, it's very drapey, which is really nice and it's next to skin soft. Whereas this cardigan, I thought I'll always be wearing something underneath it. And I just don't, this has already been blocked, I just don't feel that it's really showing that lace pattern very well and I just worry because it's it's already got uh, quite wide drapey sleeves that the yarn itself is adding too much uh, too much drape and I think in hindsight I probably should have used a 100% wool yarn for this particular project so as much as it pains me I'm just not happy with this I have done as I said about 95% I've done uh, both sleeves, both fronts, and about three quarters of the back section. But I'm just not happy with it, and I really think this yarn would be suited to more of a pullover that you can wear next to your skin. So I will be pulling this out as I require more yarn for this project. And this poor project has been in my suitcase uh, because we had a trip away this weekend. And I had to borrow the needle tips for my crenellated hat, the six millimeter ones. So this poor guy has <laughs> no needle tips. I also had no needle protectors with me. And thus it came out and I have dropped all those stitches. So they should be easy enough to pick back up. I'm not too worried. And worst case, I'll just cast on again. Um, but I am using six millimeter for those. In the pattern, I'm doing a 30... Uh, yeah, the 32 inch size bust. Now the pattern, uh, it is a ridden pattern and I tried to find if there was any errata but I couldn't see anything anywhere. I believe it's out of print actually. Um, so I'm doing the 32 inch size but the pattern doesn't have the schematic for the finished measurement which made it a little bit hard to choose. I usually like to see, okay, if I do this particular size, what are the actual finished measurements? So instead what I did was find the uh, stitch count for the bust area and just calculate that with the gauge to see how many inches across it, it ends up being. So for the 32 inch size I calculated that it will be about 35 inches in the bust area which means it's already got three inches of positive ease built into the pattern. Um, so I was quite happy with that. I think the next size up just would have been far too sloppy um, and large around that region. Uh, and I think also with the silk content of the yarn, that's going to um, drape and maybe have a little bit more give anyway. So I think that's um, quite a good option there. So it's a good knit so far. I haven't done too much of it, but I think it'll be something that I really get a lot of wear out of. I will put a picture in either here or I will, will have done already. So it's a simple pullover, but it's got this really interesting lace uh, down the bottom, which has actually worked after you've done the bulk of the body. So you pick up stitches and then work this lace border on. 
and it's really interesting it's I wouldn't say it's a delicate lace but it's almost in it reminds me of bunting I suppose you know the string with the little fabric flags on it so it's got these like triangle lace wedges that just drop down from the hem and I think that will work much better for this type of yarn because as I said with that silk content that's going to drape and pull in the direction it needs to whereas with this project it was going to uh, pull and drag the lace out of shape it would have looked a bit a bit daggy and a bit uh, wonky whereas I think this other project um, is much more suited for it so you live and you learn I, I thought I knew a lot about fiber choices for projects but I guess it happens to the best of us as well so on to FOs I have two FOs which were whips last time so that's good I've been finishing a few things uh, the first ones are my vanilla socks I'll also put a, a finished picture I don't have my sock blockers here so I'm just gonna have to do the best I can but here they are here and I haven't woven my ends in yet I've uh, just got back last night so here they are here just vanilla socks I use 2.25 millimeter needles and I use the Knitter's Pride wooden needles for these ones and I find my gauge is a little bit looser on those so the 60 stitches works out quite well I did uh, and sorry I should mention the yarn it's uh, opal from their talisman range and I haven't written down the color number but it's uh, the Gesundheit color and I'll, I'll put the information down below I just love these colors love the purple and yellow it's just so beautiful so for these ones, and this is my normal vanilla sock recipe, so I do uh, either 60 or 64 stitches depending on the yarn and depending on the needles I'm using. And then I do 20 rounds of 2x2 two two ribbing. And then I do 60 rounds on the leg. I like a little bit of a higher leg. I do a fish lips kiss heel, which I find fits my foot really well. Whenever I do the um, heel flap and gusset, it just pulls down underneath my heel and then the whole sock ends up kind of falling down around your ankles and into your shoe. So I, I find the fish lips kiss heel fits my foot much, much better. And then for the foot, I usually do between 70 and 80 rounds on the foot. Again, depending on the yarn and the needle, sometimes I have to increase that a bit or decrease it a little bit, depending on my row gauge. And then I do a rounded toe. Um, which decreases not every other round but I think every other second or third round uh, and then eventually ev every other round to get a nice shape like that and that fits my toe well and I find them quite comfortable to wear. So I really love this project. I just love vanilla socks. Uh, something mindless is really nice to work on and I, I just love opal yarn. It is toothy and I think a lot of people are turned off by that but they they are just the most hard wearing socks uh, you can knit. The colours are fantastic. They have so much range and they're always coming out with new collections of yarn. And I just love it. You can do a vanilla sock and, you know, the yarn is self patterning so it does the work for you. And you just have a really nice basic woolen sock to wear at the end of it. So I'll have to weave those ends in and get those finished. Um, I won't be wearing them here while I'm in Brisbane because it's about 30 degrees and it's, I haven't got the fan on or the air con so I thought that might make too much noise but it's really really hot at the moment very muggy there's a cyclone up north which I just managed to get away from I actually had to drive 13 hours yesterday out of it before it hit and um, so it's very muggy just with with all that uh, moisture hanging around in the air um, so the next FO is the Gemini pullover uh, which was a Jane Richmond pattern and again I haven't woven the ends in yet but here it is so that is technically the front according to the pattern so it's got just a rolled stockinette edging at the front and some lace on the sides the bottom. then on the back the lace goes around the whole neckline there. Sorry, a loud car. Um, so they did have photos in the pattern of people actually wearing this as the front and I think I might, obviously I can switch it up, but I think I prefer having the lace in the front for me. 
Now, the, uh, the yarn I used for this was uh, Classic Elite Yarns Soft Linen in the Blue Grotto colorway. So it's like a bluey grey, which I really like. It's um, probably one of my favourite colours, quite a muted blue colour. I mentioned this last time, the yarn itself was awful to work with. It had, it's a mix of alpaca, merino and linen. So I expected it to feel a little different, but it felt very lanolinly. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. It would leave a very sticky residue on your fingers. And even now, it has been blocked. Just touching it, I get a slight uh, tackiness to my fingers. So it was just, I really didn't enjoy, I enjoyed the pattern. I didn't enjoy working with the yarn. Hopefully I'll enjoy wearing the yarn, but just working with it left this tacky residue on my needles, it left it on my hands, and so much so that I would wash my hands and it was still sticky and tacky hours later after many washings. So it did block out quite a lot. Um, I might end up giving it another wash soon just to try and get any extra uh, grease and oil out of that as well. But it, it looks really nice. Um, I do have to weave the ends in. Around the armholes, I did Elizabeth Zimmerman's sewn bind off. I find that quite a neat bind off to do um, and it's also very stretchy, but it's stretchy without being flary. I've tried a few stretchy bind offs and sometimes I find that they just kind of flare open like a clown collar. And of course you don't really want that on your arms or anywhere really. Unless you're a clown, maybe you might like that. But um, I find the sewn bind off um, is one of my preferred methods. Now, the reason I did it on the arms is because I thought I'd try and take myself some time and just do a normal bind off in rib on the bottom hem. And I'm really not happy with it. It looks neat. It's not the look of it that I'm worried about. But the stretchiness, I mean, it does stretch a fair bit and I haven't, admittedly, I haven't tried this on after I've blocked it. But when I put it on, when I had just finished it, it was quite tight around, um, like, below my waist, like at the top of the hips, the pant line, I suppose. Not so tight that it was pulling in, but it was, it was just probably a little bit tighter than what it should be. So I did block it and I did pull that out quite a bit when I was blocking um, just to try and get a little bit more stretch. So worst comes to worst, I might just unpick that bind off, maybe even add a bit of length because it was a little bit short. I don't really want to have to keep uh, pulling my pants up or something um, if the shirt is riding up. So I'll try it on later and just see what the length is like. So I may end up, uh, may end up pulling it out, adding a little bit of length here in the stockinette area doing the ribbing and then doing a sewn bind off for the ribbing. But all in all, I really enjoyed it. Um, it will be quite a warm shirt to wear, but I'm thinking I can layer it or uh, maybe in early autumn or early, um, early spring, wear it with a cardigan or something. So I think I'll get a lot of wear out of it. And yeah, it was a really fun pattern. I really enjoy all of Jane's patterns. I've done probably a handful now. This is my second sweater of hers. The first one I did was the ladies classic raglan, which is just a really basic uh, raglan sweater for women. And I really enjoy her patterns. They're very well written, well tested. You know that you're going to get the result um, that you should. There's really no surprises. And yeah, I, I would really recommend any of her patterns. Um, anyone that wants to knit them. So that's it. It was pretty short this week. Um, I'm a little bit rushed. As I said, I only got back last night after a 13 hour drive, which wasn't planned at all. Um, but then again, the cyclone wasn't planned and we had to get out of there. Our flights were cancelled. Um, very hard to get a hire car. And now we're just all watching the weather and, uh, you know, ho hoping it's not too bad but um, I suppose this is just mother nature and, and that's what happens sometimes. Um, so I am a bit, little bit rushed today, I'm sorry about that but I've got a lot to do and um, just to get, get settled again into um, the routine of things. So that's it, um, I'll see you again for episode three which will be in a fortnight's time, in two weeks time. Um, hopefully I will have at least a hat and a pair of socks finished by then and I've got some other cast-ons that I'm hoping to do 
later this week. So I'll leave you to it. Have fun with your knitting and your projects and um, all the best and I'll see you next time. Thank you.